Yeah. Today's April 19th, 2015. Good morning and welcome everyone to the Sunday Gospel, 10 a.m. for English. Beset of the Manessas is a Spiritist Association. It's a nonprofit organization, 5013C3. We function strictly through volunteers and donations. Our mission is to study Spiritism and promote the practice of spiritual and material charity. Beset of Manessas services on YouTube and the Gospel from Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. The lecture will be broadcasted live online at slash Beset of Miami. Today's reading from the book, Our Daily Bread, by Francisco Catito Xavier, by the Spirit Emmanuel, chapter 146, Follow the Truth. Today's reading, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ, Paul, Ephesians 4.15. Because the truth is relative, numerous thinkers take the road of absolute negativism, converting materialism into a zone of extreme intellectual disorder. How can we interpret the truth if it appears to be so obscure to the ordinary methods of appreciation? Boasting over superiority, the officious scientist assures that what is real does not go beyond the organized forms, just as the fanatic who admits the divine revelation only in the circle of dogmas that he embraces. Paul, however, offers a rewarding indication to those who wish to penetrate the dominion of the highest knowledge. It is essential to follow the truth in charity without intending to incarcerate it in the prison of restricted definition. Let us convert into love the noble's teachings we have received Truth summed up with charity presents spiritual progress as a result of effort. Without taking care of this prerequisite, we will be surprised by vigorous obstacles in the path of sublimation. We are required to grow in every way that experience offers us of usefulness and beauty for the eternity with Jesus Christ. However, we will not achieve its realization without transforming daily the small parcel of truth that we possess into love for our fellow men. Comprehension seeks reality in the same manner as reality seeks comprehension. Therefore, let us be genuine, but above all, let us be righteous. For reflection about today's reading. In today's reading, Emmanuel alerts us to be watchful of the truth because the truth is relative. Numerous thinkers and scientists tend to materialism converting it into a zone of extreme intellectual disorder. The reading of Paul offers us a rewarding those who wish to penetrate the dominion of the highest knowledge, indicating the path to the truth is to be righteous and genuine and always seek love, charity, and comprehension. Today's prayer. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here today celebrate the love and teachings that you give to us through our lives that we may receive today's teachings with an open heart and open mind without any prerequisite but love lord thank you continue to please guide us even though we may be difficult we love you we praise you and lord please watch over all those who are here spiritually incarnated all those who are not here for all those who are crying and in hunger throughout the world, we all need you, every one of us, so be it. For today's lecture, Admir Serrano, Chapter 10, Blessed are the Merciful. Welcome, brother. Good morning, everyone. Always a pleasure to be here. Um, Yesterday was April 18th, and it was a very special day in the Spiritist Doctrine. Yesterday, 158 years ago, uh, it was published the first version of the Spiritist book, which gave birth or gave uh, um, um, light to the Spiritist Doctrine through that um, 
first publication of the Spirit's book. And the Spiritism is a doctrine, obviously, first of all, Christian. So we are all, every Spiritist is a Christian. And because our Spiritism is based, it's applied Christianity. It is, um, in more specific, it is uh, the teaching, not only the teachings of Jesus Christ through his, uh, the New Testament teachings and so forth, but also additional information. Additional information about the, our reality as immortal spirits. Jesus, in all his teachings, he is very clear about the continuity of life after the death of the physical body. And he is also very clear about the existence of an afterlife and a, a non-physical world where everyone will inhabit per more, more not permanently, but in more in longer times after the death of the physical body. And uh, he, in all his teachings, he endeavors to show us the necessity for our own good of changes, personal inner changes to become better persons, more evolved spirits. He is very clear in all his teachings that although materialism is necessary for our survival, it is not the only thing. There is this higher purpose that we have, which is to uh, grow spiritually, morally, and so forth. And um, the, the, the Spiritist doctrine gives us like guidance. Obviously, the first and the original teachings are in the New Testament. So we can read it and we'll learn all the teachings of Jesus in that New Testament, which is for whoever has a Bible, use a Bible, or have read a Bible. It is the second part of the Bible starting in Matthew. That's how, that's where the New Testament starts and all his teachings are there. So uh, the Spirit's book is not concentrated on the teachings of Jesus, but on new teachings. First, the existence of God, the reality of this spiritual world, the non-physical world, the reality or the teachings of reincarnation, reincarnation as a opportunity to re-educate ourselves, to become better through different uh, experiences, earthly experiences. And there's a bunch of others. Um, questions, 1019 with answers, divine laws, everything. It's a guidance for us to know our true reality. And then later came the medium's book, which is an extension of uh, the, the Spirit's book. And then the third book, the gospel according to Spiritism. So what, what happened there in the gospel was that uh, then Kardec, actually he Kardec with the help of the Spirit. So what he did, it was like a joint uh, work between Alan Kardec after he was ready to to, to take on the, the the work of the gospel, Kardec as a, an instrument, an incarnate instrument to um, record the teachings of the spirits in regards to the teachings of Jesus. So it was like a clarification of the teachings 
of the gospel. So the gospel according to spiritism is like the religion portion of our doctrine. It is the part that is more concentrated through all those chapters. Just we're just rephrasing that. The teachings of Jesus. And the purpose is for us to know more clearly how to apply each one of those teachings. First, to understand what they mean, what Jesus wanted to teach us with those teachings, and how we can use it in our daily lives to become better not better than anybody else better than we were before and this betterment this improvement we go through what we should go through like every day in the incarnate life and we also have the opportunities to learn and improve things at night when we are out of the physical body and in contact with the spirit world. We do that through our incarnate lives. Then we, when we leave incarnate life upon the death of the physical body, we also continue this evolutionary journey. So we are always, well, not we are always learning. We always have the opportunity to learn. Incarnate life and not, not in the disincarnate life. We have the opportunity. It's going to depend on us whether we want to learn. if we feel that necessity to learn. So what we, we learn in Spiritism is that everything that we learn that we're supposed to in order to improve ourselves is good for us. We are not benefiting anybody. We are actually. We, we, we benefit everybody who is around us when we make ourselves better, even unknowingly. We don't know it, but we're going to act in ways that other people see it, like it's subliminal learning, right? You learn, you, you act in a way that is proper. You act in a way that is good. You act in a way that is, that inspires others, even if you don't notice it. So we, by becoming better by improving ourselves, we tend to live a happier life, right? Or an easier life, as the spirits say, as happy as our incarnate condition and the condition of the earth as a planet of trials and expiation allows us to be. And I, I, I read something that interesting one time that we, we have moments of happiness. And we have moments of unhappiness. It's just a matter of us understanding and accepting that. And understanding that there are steps that we can take in order to be as happy as this incarnate condition allows us to. So throughout the teachings of Jesus, there are several lessons that he gives us in parables and, and so forth. And today we're going to talk about one of those lessons that he spoke in the Sermon of the Mountain called One of the Beatitudes that is, blessed are the merciful. And uh, 
the reason that he says that is that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy and that is a drawing of the sermon of the mountain one of them and now but what is mercy so this is a definition a, a, a dictionary definition of mercy mercy is compassion or forbearance shown especially to an offender or to one subject to one's power i have someone who is below me for some reason so i am i have compassion for that person even though maybe in some ways i am superior not necessarily superior in morally or or spiritually but maybe i have certain power like um, slave owners had that power over their slaves for instance so lenient or compassionate treatment then forbearance is patient self-control restraint and tolerance compassionate treatment of those in distress works of mercy among the poor and then the religious more religious uh, definition is a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion i don't know if you take the time to read the news like um, throughout your lives and, and and there's a lot i i i don't know if i uh, if there's this i have this curiosity and uh, I'm always uh, seeing, I try to be, I try to see what goes on in the world and many times, uh, and, and uh, it, it is um, a pity in, in, and I feel sad and sorry for many occurrences that goes on in the world because of the lack of compassion we see it daily lack of compassion and excess and excessive ignorance so we see it throughout the world we see it in small scale like um, domestic violence for instance, and we see, I read uh, many news about Brazil, especially. I don't know, there's this things that draws me because I try to understand human behavior and why we act in the ways that we act. And there are ways that we, that we uh, understand it better. When we understand the spiritism, for instance, recently, a mother in Brazil put rat poison in the ice cream of her nine-year-old son, and he died. She also had put the same poison in the husband's ice cream, but the husband survived. We see in Brazil now, and there's this movement. So these things happen so that maybe that draws this occurrences, it's interesting how they hap happen and why they happen maybe, because they draw that things that we have in us. Like uh, Brazil is a very liberal country in, in many ways. So we, we have a rise also of uh, people coming out of the closet who are homosexuals for instance transsexual so we see a lot of beatings and even killings of uh, these um, uh, transsexual because they're because of their difference so there is sometimes a group you know there's beatings and also death um, this these are all very recent so we have this uh, spirit for instance who has his own reality which is different from ours and they have the right to live and the right to express themselves but they live in a society or in a space 
because there are other places that are more accepting, more lenient, more compassionate. So for some reason, they draw in their group that ignorance that still harbors, right? Many of uh, our human fellow. Those are like small, <clears throat> atrocious, but small. Then we have in greater scale. I don't know if you come up, see if you if you follow what's happening in Iraq and Syria, and also and and mostly related to the ISIS, to the Islamic group, the Islamic the the Islamic they call it Islamic army. This group of people who the one they have one leader, and this leader declared. He had a group of, uh, they're, they're terrorists first. They're, they're violent terrorists. They're um, religious extremists. So religion in religious extremism is like a group of people who have a distorted understanding of their religion. So, and it's a extreme fundamentalist idea completely distorted of their religion so muslim for instance islam which is a peaceful religion religions normally they have that peaceful side of it but for some reason they distort that because we every country in the world every society especially now that we are all interconnected and we are all developing. We tend, and America has a great influence in all over the world, or the Western uh, 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 side of the hemisphere of society, the way that we dress, the way that we believe, you know, there's much more freedom than in many of those countries that are part of their, their, their governance is religious based. So, and people like it in Western, so we, we're cool, right? We, we dress different, we dress, we don't have, we, ha we don't have that rigidity of uh, 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 life as rigorous as in some countries. So we have this more lax way of living. And some of these fundamentalists see that as wrong. It, it is not what the Koran is teaching. Even where their religion is the base religion, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and uh, all those Middle Eastern countries and some South African and some African countries, North Africa especially, it's all Muslims in there. But there if you if you can see them, those if you see those countries, they are more they're more open. They the the followers of religion, they also follow and adjust to progress. But then you have this group of people who say these people are, this is not what Muhammad taught it, taught. This is how it is. So there's still, and there was as recent as three weeks ago, this group stoned to death in a public place with people watching, a couple who were engaged, and they found out that they had had sex before they got married. So they were punished to death because that's what the, the Quran says. And we also have some rigid laws in the Bible. The, the Moses, Mosaic law is rigid. But the times and the progress shows us that we need to be, many of those teachings were necessary at that time because the condition that people were people were more brutal and uh, there weren't like laws social laws as severe or jails or stuff so if you do something wrong it's the, the people where you live will punish you according to your transgression so it was necessary to keep order 
at that time where we were more or humans were more brutal needed that uh, restraint so how do you that why was the law you know tooth for a tooth an eye for an eye if you kill somebody you're gonna get killed so if you don't want to get killed you don't kill so it's a way that they had but it was a divine law it was like more intuitive so that they could keep peace and order if you want to kill somebody you, you have the freedom to do it but you're gonna get killed in islamic laws for instance today till today like the, there's the islamic army they they chopped the arm off and you can see in a picture if you put it on youtube you see it they chopped their, their hand in public place people watching why because they stole stealing is against the law it's something that you're ripping off your brother if there's a punish for the punishment for that and according to the islamic law the old islamic law you get your hand chopped off so you won't steal with that hand anymore you have the other then you try to decide whether you want to do that or not so we still have today in many parts of the world this extreme lack of compassion and that shows us the need of us in our small ways to then to incorporate these values or these teachings in our lives so there's not much when we see the situation around the world there is not much that we can do because of the distance because what we do other than feel compassion for both sides for the transgressor because of their ignorance because of their uh, uh, their evolving spirits just like any one of us but they have put themselves in a position where they bring harm hurt and sorrow to immediately to the people who they're dealing with and then obviously to the extended community we see uh for instance in iraq and in syria if you're familiar with the bible and there's a history of the story of the bible and abraham and the garden of eden all that place is where iraq is today it's Mesopotamia, summer it's all there it's all there so the area that we see all these atrocities is the area that at one point in time was the most developed place on earth there are cities like in the area Erbil city it's in the um, in the um kurdistan area kurdistan is an area that was um very great in agriculture because of the temp temperate climate and all that so that's in that area is also where agriculture was dominated let's say where they so in agriculture the good things of agriculture uh, was that you have food that you can plant in a certain place so you don't need to be moving around you can build your house there and you can stay there for a while so that all happened so in those are Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh in English, all of those historical cities with those historical monuments, with all, all of that greatness, this Islamic army is destroying. Destroying because they're, first they say that the, uh, this is another interpretation that we saw in the Moses. Yeah, we're destroying this it's in statues like six six thousand years <laughs> all those relics that uh, archaeologists praised and uh, made their lifetimes uh, uh um, studying and learning that was there 
they're, they, they're exploding. They're using jackhammers to, to, to tear them down. And then they, they're selling pieces in the black market to fund their activities. So we see a lot of hurt everywhere that ignorance is installed in greater scale. So all we can do is to feel sorry for all of them, for the monuments that is the sign of uh, the, the, our accomplishment as evolving the spirit. Because we have this, our history of uh, um, ignorance also. When we, in, in back in time, when we were developing as a spirit incorporated or incarnated in different bodies, starting in the lower forms of animal life and growing to then to become um, humans in this body, a body appropriate, <clears throat> appropriate and in condition to be served as a proper instrument for the level of intellectuality, morality and spirituality that we had achieved. So our history, all of us, if we were able to look into everything that is stored in our mental body, we would see ourselves also in those situations, most likely. There we, were, we also were people who did harm to others, to society, because of our lack of learning, not having enough time to learn yet. But luckily, we got to a point where we are sitting here today in this spirit, this spiritist center because we decided that this is the path that we want to take, that we are ready for this next step, to become like these the, the spirits more evolved that can make a difference. That can make the earth, in that case, the planet, regeneration planet, that the spirits say that one day we will reach. So when Christ came with these teachings, at, at, at that time, that was mostly in need because people were still using those old laws. So in, in the case of um, um, Judaism, the Mosaic law, where a very uh, vengeful, severe God was portrayed. So Jesus came to bring a mild God, a God that was a father, a father who would not abandon us, never, but that we also had commitments, that we also had work to do in order to get closer and closer to this fatherly figure that we saw in God. And mercy is one of the values that we should learn and practice so that we put ourselves in a position not better than the others, but better, you know, it's good for us, like I said. But that by being, by having this type of energy, and obviously it's going to be translated into actions, we do that part of uh, our job in the creation because we are all workers of God. So we are God's workers and we help his children. I mean, we help God to help his children. And the first way that we help his children is to help us. So I was thinking today as I came here, because I am very severe with myself the way I think, the way I act, I feel, even sometimes I feel 
very i feel mad at me because the way that i judge myself many times and i talk to myself i do a lot of self-talking and not all self-talking that i do to myself is because there's this part of us right so there's a part that i'm severe and then on the way uh, here i thought you sh you're gonna talk about mercy today you should talk about self mercy i have these two things here self have mercy on yourself shut up for a moment you know be human you can do it you have to do it you have to be compassionate of course but be compassion of yourself first then you can be compassion compassionate to others so i'm trying to do then that self mercy now we have the teachings of jesus like be merciful so that you get mercy or 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 blessed are the merciful because they will attain mercy so when he says mercy is because he's he's putting us in a place where we are being watched by god so god will say you be merciful of my children of other children of your brothers obviously and i'll be i'll have mercy on you you have favors from me i'll be merciful i'll take good care of you and we have a different understanding that's that's a good thing to know obviously but we have this understanding also that uh, the mercy that we receive all that we receive from life are the results of the way we act so um if we, if we're merciful and, and we do all those good things most likely as a law of cause effect there will be beneficial things happening to us regardless if it's god who sent it or his angels or whoever it's some something that is automatic be good and good will be will come to you things like that so we have here some teachings of the spirits what is uh, regarding to mercy mercy so mercy is a compliment to mind mildness because the person who is not merciful cannot be mild and pacific so when we see these atrocities or people who are committing committing such atrocities it's very easy for us to see those behavior of not being mild or pacific there is still that brutality in them that for some reason uh they 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 find ways to externalize and we're talking about like like i said in in, in, a, in a bigger proportion but we see that in our daily lives also the way we talk to people many times the way we uh, even if we don't want to we don't mean to we end up offending people sometimes physically less physically hopefully more verbally so you know mildness is something that that is a that complement to mercy so they come together and we should be watchful in the way we think we act and stuff so that we keep all this behaviors these things in mind so that we work because the idea is to become merciful you know, understand what mercy is so that with this that we're learning learning here we we we, we put it in our lives as part of our learning because when we come to earth we don't have a manual how to live your life we learn by try and errors by suffering by not suffering that's how we learn so when we come here and we, we 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 learn that if we do this instead of that you know if we be, if we be good instead of being mad or mean and stuff it's good for us so we already know we have the recipe so what we do is we incorporate it in our daily cake mix that we make mercy also consists of being able to forget and forgive all offenses hate and rancor denote the spirit without any elevation or magnanimity so we see that you know hate and rancor and that that is uh, if you read or if you read also about diseases and things like that not only physical but emotionally emotional and stuff you see that a, a lot of uh, illnesses are related to or even not related but many as a consequence of harboring such sentiments like hate and rancor 
and when and we see it also that when those and everybody everybody is able to everybody who still harbors this hate and rancor and things like that against offenses that many times we blow them out of proportion it's not as big we make them big but they're not that big then when they, they're able to relieve themselves of that through uh, uh, therapy or or an insight or or a near-death experience or whatever that person then will become start becoming better or healthier physically healthier emotional by just by getting rid of that garbage because it is poison like Shakespeare that the hate that rancor is a poison that we take while we wait for the other person to die so if it is a poison that we're taking it is that poison that's going if that poison is going to kill us not somebody else right now being able to forget offenses is the mark of an elevated soul which does not perturb itself with the blows it may be dealt and this is something that it's it's normal in life we we live in a society we associate with people of all different uh, uh, um, uh, learning different uh, um, intellectual level moral level intelle uh, uh, <clears throat> spiritual level so we are susceptible of all of that so it's going to depend on us on 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 the way we think how we're going to react to that person trying to offend us and we see that in in uh, in a workplace for instance where people are competing for positions and stuff like backstabbing, you know, things like that. So the one is always anxious, the unmerciful, of a dark susceptibility and full of bitterness, while the other is calm, full of sweetness and charity. So th these are, this the, the, the last part here is the consequence. The consequence of being that which we are learning or doing. So we know if we act this way, we'll become sweet and charitable, and that is good for us. So if it is good that we do, uh, in, in psychology it says it, if that is good for whatever, do more of it. So in our lives, if this is good for us, let's do more of it. And then we have this teachings of uh, this teaching forgive others so that god may forgive you that's what jesus is saying in his teachings and then we have the spirits telling us before death reaches us it is necessary that we pardon all our enemies thereby eradicating all motive motives for dissension as well as all causes of animosity in this manner, it is quite possible to make a friend in the next world out of an enemy in this world. What they mean is that we have these people, we have people here who we might consider an enemy and we do harm to that person or that person did harm to us. And uh, we are what we are, right, in this world. What all that death does is to transfer us, it's to get us out of the physical body and transfer us from. The, the physical way of being to a non-physical way of being, but we still are what we are. Uh, uh, our feelings, our emotions, that's that's us. We cannot get rid of ourselves. So if, if we have that, if we try, when we're, we move for good to the spirit world, and we have this animosity, this thing against that person who maybe did harm to us, we might continue to hate, in, to, to hate that person. And uh, this forgiveness thing before death, it's very important. I worked with uh, people who were dying, people with terminal diseases, and I saw that in my work. It was a volunteer work, but I could see that, that when a person had uh, not forgiving, forgiven someone or he needed to ask for forgiveness for harm that they had done, we see that there's no peace at that moment that is mostly necessary in the transition from leaving this world to the next. We see a lot of, uh, 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 of anxiety, not that person, uh, want a person not wanting to leave the physical body or the physical world until that 
forgiveness piece had been uh, taken care of. So we know that. So we do it now. So that we always peaceful. It doesn't matter. We can die a hundred years from now. We never know. But the more we do this forgiveness piece is better for us right today. So we do that. It works. So do more of it. And now we have this uh, beautiful thing. This is from Paul the Apostle, uh, but not when he was incarnated. It was in in the in the uh, during the composition of the of the, the the gospel according to Spiritism. So he manifested himself through one of the mediums, and he said, uh, "This was the the three most uh, uh, the three parts that stand out more." We can read the whole thing in chapter ten of the the gospel. To forgive one's enemies is to ask for forgiveness for oneself. We forgive our enemies or whatever it is. So we, we relieve ourselves of, of that burden that we're carrying. Because when we have, the, we don't, if we don't forgive, we have something that we think somebody offended us in this sentiment that we have, it is a negative sentiment. It is rancor, like I said, maybe hate. So when we do this piece of forgiveness, we get rid of that junk. So it's like we are forgiving ourselves. We are relieving ourselves of that burden. Now, to forgive one's friends is to give them proof of your friendship. If you cannot forgive your friend, it is not your friend. Or you're not his friend. Maybe he's yours, but you're not his. And to be able to forgive offense, whatever it is, whatever it is, from whoever, what, whatever kind of offense, is to show yourself better than you were. You improved. We have improved. And that is our goal in this life, in this incarnation, in the future incarnation as well. Always becoming better than we were before, better than yesterday. And as I found this Tertullian saying that was very interesting, and he was one of the founding fathers of the Christian church, in 155, 230, he said, do you want to be happy for a moment? Get revenge. Do you want to be happy forever? Forgive. So those are the two things. And uh, we have another teaching uh, in that chapter, reconciliation with your adversaries, that in the sermon that Jesus said, says, to his disciples, agree with thine adversary quickly, which thou art in the way with them, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt not by no means come out thence till you hast paid the uttermost farthing, or the last dime, or penny. Always teaching that forgiveness, reconciliation, which is very important. And I saw that too in people who are living this world, what lack of reconciliation of things not done before or prior to, then I saw the, the harmful effect that they have on that person who is about to leave the physical world. So knowing that, because we, we, we learn from what we see, we learn from what we hear. So knowing that, we do that. So we try, we strive every moment to be, to reconciliation, reconcile with whoever it is that is part of our lives. And th the closer they are to us, the more necessary it is for us to reconcile so that we can keep uh, uh, peace and harmony. This is uh, the one, we're, we're short in time here, but this one, the one that uh, you don't look at the moat in your brother's eye when you have a beam in yours. So that means we, and that is something that's normal and natural to us, uh, many of us, not all of us, of course, is that we tend to see what other, what is wrong with other people than what is wrong with us. But we also learn in psychology that many of the defects that we see 
in others they're just a mirror image of that what we are so we cannot we're not able to see in ourselves that that we don't like because we don't want to we have those shadows as Carl Jung said so we have things that we don't want to see that we have or because we think that we we, we, you know, we're not wrong. Everybody else is wrong but us. So when we see defects and we, we talk, and the more we talk about them, the more we put them out, expose them in the other person. If we look into ourselves, we'll see that what we're saying, that those things that we're saying uh, is what we feel about ourselves. So that's good therapy too, because when that happens, stay on. So wait and let me see what I am doing. Maybe that is me right reflected in the image of the other person so first let's look into us do not judge others if you do not wish to be judged in return he that has that is without sin let him be the first to cast a stone that's what jesus says that's in the chapter two to the adulterous woman but that's something that goes hand in hand with the mote in the eye Let's not judge anybody else. Let's first see what we're doing here and how we are behaving. If we are in the right path and if we are really acting Christian-like, it's much better than us wasting our time and see what other people are doing. And we have this, um, we're about finishing here, that Simon Bordeaux also in, in is a spirit who participate in codification of the gospel according to spiritism forget all evil that has been done to you and think of nothing save one thing the good that you can do the good that you can do it's always about us what can i do to be to be to, to make it better so what good can i do instead of uh, wasting the time with the other person Take care, therefore, to expunge from yourselves all rancorous sentiments. What remains at the bottom of the hearts of each one of his children is known to God. So happy is he who can sleep at night saying, I have nothing against my neighbor. I have not, this could be a mantra, a mantra that we could, could uh, go to bed with every night. I have nothing against my neighbor. Maybe there's this, the, then there's this little voice, oh, yes, you do. So what neighbor, this neighbor, so what is it? Then you fix it. That's how we learn. So blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So us, obviously, in this work of improving ourselves, learning the lessons of you know, Jesus and practicing these lessons, we have all, we, we, that, that is, it's a law, it's a law, it's a divine law that whatever we do will come back to us. All choices that we make, and I'm living that, we, we all live that, and, and if you look closer, you will see. All the choices that we make will have a consequence. Then there's complaint because you made the wrong choice. But there's nothing that you can do because the choice is made. So what we learn is whatever choice we make, there will be a result. So make wise choices so we get better results. And these choices are the choices the way we also act, think, and live. And we know for certain that it will come consequence. We can even know what kind of consequence it is when we are aware of what we did. I do, I know mine. When I act and sometimes it's, you know, if you didn't think enough, then you do it. And once you throw the stone, you won't get it back. It's, it's done. Just wait and pray so that, you know, you're not hurt that much. So we do, we become merciful we will obtain mercy, mercy, not necessarily from, from, from another source or God or his angels. We're going to obtain mercy from, as a consequence of what we do, as a consequence for the efforts that we have put in becoming better. It's a law, and it's irrefutable. 
it's going to happen. So thank you very much. And now we have a final pray, prayer and then we go to the passes. Thanking God for the opportunity of being here. Thanking Jesus Christ for all his marvelous teachings and lessons so that we are guided to the right path. And knowing that we are the first beneficiary of the good things that we put up. The way we act, the way we live, the way we think. Knowing that we always ask for the guidance also of our guardian angels. Those spirits who are walking with us from the other side of life. Walking, helping us in our path of improvement, betterment. Stay always with us, always giving us your love, your strength, and your understanding, and your forgiveness for the things that we do wrong, and of your light for putting us back on the right path. Stay with us, give us your peace, love, and blessings now and forever. So be it. <laughs>